What is going on guys? We are back and today we are going to be starting a brand new Surviving With series, which is going to be Surviving With Create 0.3. Now if you guys have kept up with pretty much any mod of Minecraft news over the last couple of weeks, you'll already know that Create 0.3 was released and everyone absolutely loves it. It's essentially taken the mod of Minecraft community by storm and now everywhere you look on Reddit you're going to see posts about the new amazing builds people made with Create and a ton of questions about the mod because quite frankly there's not a ton of information out there on it, even on the older updates. So it makes total sense that people stumbled across the last series we did on Create 0.2 last year, and they're finding out that a lot of the information doesn't translate to 0.3 because of how big of an update it was, and there's a ton of stuff that's new that's really important that wasn't covered. So naturally, everyone asked for a new series, and that's exactly what we're doing, because quite frankly, if I can help you guys out and at the same time get to try out this absolutely awesome looking update, I'm totally game for that. So that's exactly what we're going to do right here. We're going to go over all the old, all the new, everything in between and have an awesome time doing it and try and make some pretty cool builds. So there's a couple housekeeping things that we go over at the beginning of every Surviving With series. That's just information on the series in general. If you really don't care about that and you want to get right into the building and all that good stuff, feel free to jump to the next section of the video. But for those of you that stuck around and you're new, or you just want to hear my amazing, soothing voice for the hundredth time in a row on these series, well, the Surviving With series is based around playing through modded Minecraft in survival with one mod that changes the game in a very fundamental way. Of course, for us today, that is Create 0.3, which adds in a ton of stuff to go over, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're doing a deep dive every single episode into the different things that the mod adds into the game, giving you all the information you need, not only to see a couple of the cool things you can do with the mod, but to show you why you would use things in certain ways. That way, when you're done, you're not just going to copy a build that we did in the episode. You're going to have a couple ideas of things to do, how to do them, and you're going to be able to do it on your own and actually understand every aspect of it. You're not just going to come out copying a build that I do and have no idea why it works, why you would want it, or how you could make it if it broke and you needed to fix it. But with this, you'll be able to fix it on your own, like your own Minecraft mechanic, which is something I think people do not put enough value on when it comes to watching tutorial videos. So along with the create mod, we also have a couple assisting mods. I will call it they're essentially quality of life mods. Things like, as you can see here, JEI, we have voxel maps in this one. So things that really don't alter the core gameplay, but makes our lives a little bit more bearable as we play throughout the series. I'm not about to play through modded Minecraft without recipes. So you can find a full list of all those quality of life mods put right down in the description, along with the versions we're using. And then right below that, you'll find a world seed, which is mainly because I do not release the world download till the last episode of the series. And people who want to play along tend to ask for the world seed. So you know what? I thought I'd get out ahead of it. We put the world seed down there. If you want to play in the same world, well, you're going to have the coordinates on the screen right now, and you're going to have the world seed. So feel free to jump over and build along with me wherever you like. If you want to build the same exact base, that's totally cool. Now, we did go out and do some vanilla gathering, mainly just so that we can jump right into the fun stuff when we get started today. But hopefully I don't die going outside because a creeper blew up at the beginning of me trying to record for this episode. and I had to fix stuff, but this is the homestead. This is the little the little hole in the wall, essentially, that we are working with for now. It will get much bigger, but you know what? I actually put some time into trying to make this look a little bit nice and have a place for us to set stuff up. If all the stuff in Create is meant to look awesome and realistic, well, then we should have a home that at least looks awesome. Not super realistic, but at least awesome to go along with it. So we got everything we need. We got some diamond tools, all the vanilla stuff. We got chests full of resources in here to work with, and we are good to go and hop right into the first episode. So today we are going to be setting up one of the early options for generating rotational power, and that is going to be the water wheel. Now this is awesome because you can get into this right away. You don't need to set anything else up first. It's super cheap to craft, which is awesome. If you just do a little bit of basic gathering, you'll stumble across everything you need to make this, and it's gonna get us a pretty decent amount of rotational power right out the gate so that we can mess around with some of the machines. Now, once we set this up, we are then going to be setting up the 
mechanical press, which is going to actually require a couple new blocks to make, but it's going to utilize some of the rotational energy to allow us to make what I think is the most important thing when you actually start with create. And I think it's something that people definitely don't touch on enough and is extremely undervalued, but it is going to be, if I can find them over here, the engineering goggles. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, they're not super flattering when you wear them, but by making the golden sheet using the mechanical press, we can craft these, and they're going to allow us to see all the different numeric values of all the different generators and machines that we are running to make sure that our system is going to run flawlessly. And I'm gonna go over that as we make all the different stuff, but all you need to know is essentially create is a very simple math equation of making sure that the stress capacity, which is essentially the rotational power that you are putting into your system, and the stress impact or the rotational power that you are taking out of your system is going to work out. The amount you're taking out cannot be greater than the amount you're putting in, and if you do that, everything is going to work fine. So having these goggles to make sure that that makes sense and all the numbers work out is going to be a lifesaver. So what we're gonna do quickly is grab out all the stuff we need to craft really quick, and we're gonna make a couple water wheels and get those set up so that we can then start putting down the mechanical press and giving that a little bit of power. Now, along with that, I also do wanna say that those goggles allow us to read additional information from the speedometer and the stressometer, which will give us the speed and stress of the entire system. So those are also really important. We're gonna cover those too at the end, but I thought I should touch on those because we're crafting them right now. So the first thing we're gonna make is the water wheel. We're gonna make four of these. And so we're gonna need some slabs of wood and then a large cog wheel. And the large cog wheel requires some wood and then it requires an andesite alloy, which is going to come from Create and be two pieces of andesite and two iron nuggets to actually make. Now we already have these made, so we are going to be making two sets of the large cog wheels, making four total, and then quickly making all four water wheels, just like that, super cheap, super easy. And these, like I said, will generate a pretty decent amount of rotational power, at least for the early game. And they're actually really easy to set up and optimize. They're not as clunky as a lot of the other water wheels you've probably messed around with in other mods, like potentially immersive engineering, um, which is a little bit more of a pain to set up because they're significantly larger. Now, we're also going to be making a couple shafts right here. We're gonna do, I think 16 should be sufficient for the time being. We are going to be making a couple gearboxes, which means we need to make some small cog wheels. So we can make a couple of those, I think. Let's see if that's the amount we want. We're gonna make some gearboxes, which means we also need some andesite casing. So we are going to be making two sets of those. We'll be making four gearboxes. These are going to allow us to transfer or change the direction of the rotational energy. And it can also allow us to turn it at a 90 degree angle. So super useful, especially when you're trying to maneuver around corners and things like that. And then we're going to be making the mechanical press, which requires a couple additional small cog wheels. So I guess we made a couple too few. So there we go, the mechanical press. This works in a lot of different recipes. For today, we're going to be making the sheets, but you're gonna use this for a lot of different things throughout the mod, and it's gonna be required to progress. So it's pretty much the first thing that you actually want to make. And then we're going to be making the speedometer and the stressometer. And if you look at the stressometer, it's just the speedometer put into a crafting grid. So we're gonna need both of those. So I think for the time being, we actually have pretty much everything that we need and we can start setting this stuff up. Okay guys, so now that we have everything crafted, we should be good to come up here and start setting it up. We're gonna be doing this in the base because I wanna have the power generation source pretty close to the stuff that we're initially working with. And also, like I said, these really aren't super intrusive. So what we're gonna do is place down this oak plank right here, and it's gonna allow us to put the water wheels right off of it so that we can orient them properly and I know they're slightly clipping into the floor, that's totally fine. This is essentially not a block right here. Uh, eventually when we put water over it, it will read it like that, but for now we can just walk right through it, which means we also have no issue just getting rid of these blocks right here. And this is going to allow the water to properly flow around this to optimize the rotational speed of it. So essentially what we want is for the water to come from behind it, go over it, and then go down across the bottom so the way that we're going to do that is by lining the back here with these slabs, and we're gonna put two right up here on each side to prevent the water from spilling over. 
And honestly, this should be enough to give us the maximum speed for these water wheels. So we're just going to place down this water right here. And I'm actually going to run outside because I'm going to grab two more buckets of it. And then we should be good to go with these actually running at their maximum potential. And I'll be able to show you the number values on it to prove that later on in the episode once we have those goggles. But right here you can see they do have this weird thing, which really bothers me, which you can see right here, where apparently they just disappear when you're looking at them at a specific angle. And so this is honestly kind of bothersome for me. Um, I don't know if it happens only when you look through the water or what, but as you can see, it does occasionally happen. Um, so it's not just you if that is happening, but these should now be spinning at 16 RPM. And this is where we get the chance to go over how generators in Create actually work. Because some of these are going to be variable speed generators, like these water wheels right here, and others, like the encased fan, are not variable speed generators. So the idea is that every machine, as we can see, if we open up JEI and hover over, let's say, the water wheel and press shift, we can see that it provides a small stress capacity. Every time you add the ability to handle more stress by adding rotational power, the stress capacity of your network or whatever is hooked together goes up. And certain ones will increase the stress capacity in a small way. Others, things like the furnace engine, you can see have a large increase to stress capacity. Uh, and then if you look at machines that consume it, these will have a high stress impact, low stress impact. The idea is that every machine that has these, whether it generates or consumes rotational power to run, is going to have a baseline of stress units. Whether it's a generator and adds them, or it's a machine and consumes them, they're going to have a baseline. And the baseline for water wheels is 16. Now the idea is that that is at one RPM. So if we're running them at 16 RPM, then we have the base of one stress unit at one RPM, or 16 stress units at one RPM times 16 RPM, which is what they should be running at right now since they are optimized. And that's going to give us 256 stress units per water wheel, which means right here with four of them, we have 1,024 stress units in our system to work with. So the stress capacity is 1,024. And then as we tack more machines on, those are going to consume the stress capacity by having a stress impact on them. Now, the example that I will give right now, just to talk about this before we even set it up, the mechanical press has a baseline stress unit of eight. And so this, if we leave this running at 16 RPM, is going to make it so that the mechanical press consumes 16 times eight, which is 128 or half of what we would generate with one of these water wheels. So it's actually not too much, but you actually don't need for the mechanical press for it to consume all of that. Some of these machines will have a minimum speed, like the mechanical mixer right here, where you can't reduce the RPM down to a certain value or lower, whereas other machines like the mechanical press, this thing can go at an RPM of one. It will be agonizingly slow, but it will still work. So the idea essentially is you want to generate as much stress capacity as possible, and then you want to utilize things that we will go over in the future, like cog wheels and such, and there's a lot of other stuff to work with, um, but cog wheels and all that different stuff to either increase or reduce the speed to make it so that machines will consume as little stress capacity as they possibly can in some cases, or make it so that they are running at the proper speed to actually function. So that's sort of the generic gist on how the math works behind these. Every single machine that produces or consumes the, the rotational power will have a baseline production or consumption. And then depending on the RPM that the system is running at, the baseline will be multiplied by that. So the way that you avoid consuming too much in machines that have a very high baseline is by reducing the speed of the rotation before it gets there. So you would take the rotation at 16 from here and adjust it to be, let's say, 8. And then you would only consume 64 for the mechanical press instead of 128. Now that'll make a lot more sense as we go down the line, but to give you guys a general overview of how it works, that's it. I know it's a lot of stuff to go over right out the gate, but that is how you determine how the systems actually generate power, how they consume it, all that good stuff. So now we're gonna actually move this power and start using it in the mechanical press. 
So let's say I want the mechanical press to be on this wall, well, let's say right about here. This one is going to come down and hammer the floor, and this is where the rotational power is gonna go in. You can see it pretty much looks just like a shaft if we were to put it on here. And so we'll get rid of that shaft real quick, but that means that we need the rotational power pushing in here. Now I'm actually going to place this down on the side here because I want it to accept the rotational power from the side and we don't have the wrench yet, which would make rotating this stuff a lot easier. But what we're gonna do is pull the rotational power from this. And I guess these are new indicators that they added for when you place stuff down. Uh, but the way that we are gonna deal with this is we're gonna get it over here and now we need to move it up one and have it going in a completely different direction. So how do we do that? We use these magical things called gearboxes. Now the gearboxes are not going to have any stress impact, nothing that you do to actually either move rotational power or translate it into a different direction is going to have any stress impact, which is awesome, but these are going to allow us to alter their direction and alter the, uh, we'll alter the direction in terms of, you know, the angle of it, move it 90 degrees, and also flip the rotational direction if we so choose. So what we're gonna do here is utilize the gearboxes that move it vertically. And so you can see right here, we can now access it from this side. And then we are going to place down another gearbox, if I can get it oriented properly here, to make it come out this side. So just like this. So we have a gearbox here that is going to make it go from being horizontal to vertical and then step it up one. And then we have a gearbox here, which is going to make it go from vertical to horizontal again. And so the way that gearboxes work, if we look right here, just to have a general overview of them right now, is you can see that this one is rotating clockwise right here. If we go to the other side, this one is going to, well, this one's also rotating clockwise. It's going to be reversing the rotation that we are putting in it. So down here, I can show you guys by taking a look at this to make a little bit more sense. Down here, this is spinning clockwise. And if we put this back down and look at the top, this is spinning counterclockwise. So whichever side you're inputting the power on, it is going to reverse the direction it is spinning on the other side. So this is a way that not only can you use these to actually change the physical direction the rotation is going in at a 90 degree angle, but you can also change the direction the rotation is spinning in if you need to. Things like the crushing wheels that we will get to down the line need to have opposite directions of rotation towards each other, so you'll need things like this. Now with these gearboxes, you can have ones that go horizontally or vertically. All you gotta do to swap between them is put them in the crafting grid and you can infinitely swap between. And now we put down the shaft right here, connect it, and the mechanical press is working, believe it or not. You can see the rotational power is coming out this side too. So if we wanted to continue this on, we could just keep building here and add on more machines that would use it. But what we're gonna do now is grab a quick piece of gold and we can toss it right under the mechanical press and it'll turn it into the gold sheet that we need. So if we come over here, all we gotta do is throw it under. You can use levers to control these to make sure that they don't go right away. But if you throw this under, if I could actually do it, uh, without a lever, it'll sense that something's under there and it will automatically come down, make an extremely satisfying noise in my opinion. And there we go. Now it'll wait until something's under it again. So you can see it went at a pretty moderate speed there. Imagine if this thing was going at 1 16th the speed, which it would if we brought it all the way down to one RPM instead of 16. Now what we're gonna do is go and make those goggles so that I can show you guys the numeric values that I was talking about, which means that we need some glass and we need a piece of string, which I actually, now that I think about it, don't believe I actually have. So I may need to go kill a spider to get this. So I think I'm gonna quickly cut right here. I got the glass, but I have not killed the spider. Thankfully it's nighttime. So I'm gonna go out there and kill one of these bad guys. Well, actually, maybe we could just do it on camera. We don't have any armor, but uh, we'll come around here and get one of these guys to go on us so that we can kill him without getting all these skeletons and creepers and stuff on us. Let's see. Does anyone, any one of these spiders wanna come be a friend? Oh. You? There we go. Look at that. Like an expert MMO player playing Minecraft. We're pulling one monster, we're getting the loot we need, and we're going back. Okay, well, 
There you guys saw it. Efficiency. So now we have everything we need to craft the goggles. Obviously, you can tell I'm super prepared. Uh, so here we go. We got the engineering goggles. We got these. And now if we throw them on, look at how the world has changed. Oh, it's so amazing. Not really. But if we come over here and look at these, oh my gosh, all of a sudden we have the generator stats. So you can see here that the stress capacity is at 256 stress units at its current speed. That goes for all of these. And if we look over here, the kinetic stats of this is the stress impact of 128 stress units at the current speed, both verifying the information that I said earlier and also my ability to do math at a remedial level, which I think we all know is extremely important when playing modded Minecraft apparently after doing the mechanism series, because that one was a doozy when it came to math. But something that's also really important to note is not only can you see that information on here when you look at these, but if you go into JEI now, you should be able to see both the requirements for all these machines. So you don't even need to have it in the world. It's going to tell you the baseline stress unit consumption. So the reason that these say something like in this case, it is going to need four times RPM is going to be the stress impact of four and then multiplied by the RPM. If we look over here, you can see that the stress impact is eight, like I said, times the RPM. So that number you see is the baseline stress unit consumption at one RPM. And even here you can see that the mechanical mixer needs to be run at 30 RPM plus, which means that when we get to that maybe next episode, if we were to be using this setup, we would need to double the speed at which this runs at to be able to even have the potential of running that system. And that means that this mechanical mixer is gonna consume a heck of a lot of uh, stress because it's gonna be running at such a high speed. So that's the reason you end up needing a ton of different methods of generating rotational power in this series. And then we can also take a look at the speedometer and if we transform it, the stressometer quickly by tossing these down right here. So what we're gonna do is quickly make a break in this and we're just gonna put these down in our system anywhere you want and it's gonna give you info on the network. Now, if you didn't have the goggles, you would simply see this visual indicator here saying we are in the green for the stress on the current system. It's barely consuming any of the available stress. But if we look at this, we can see that it gives us a percentage of consumption of the capacity for the system. And then it also gives us the remaining capacity out of the total. So we can see we have a, or 896 stress units left out of 1,024 stress units. That's 12% currently being used. That is absolutely awesome to be able to see info like that. If you're ever having trouble with a system or afraid it might not work and you're testing stuff out, having one of these put down to keep referencing to see how much you have left to work with is definitely useful. Now, if we get rid of this and put down the speedometer, also has a nice visual indication. And you can see here, it simply tells us the rotational speed of 16 RPM. So if you're working with things that have variable speeds, things like the windmills and all that good stuff and the water wheels, obviously, this can be super useful to know what RPM they're spinning at in general to know how much you're generating. And then on top of that, they can be useful in situations like with the mechanical mixer, where you obviously have a minimum speed requirement if you're trying to make sure that your system is running at that. So we're not gonna leave these here. I pretty much would just walk around with them and use them as troubleshooting, but you can leave them somewhere if you want. They're not really that expensive and they look pretty cool. But that's gonna be it for today, guys. I know it was a lot of stuff to cover and I promise it will make more sense as the series go on. It's definitely a little bit hard to try and explain all of it right out the gate. So hopefully I didn't overwhelm you guys trying to go over how the stress units and everything work and how they generate power and all that stuff. But that's the mod. It's definitely a complicated one with a lot of stuff in it, but it's also really cool and allows for some super amazing builds. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode. Let me know if you guys are excited for the series. If you already watched the Create 0.2 series, hopefully it's not too painful to watch this one where we're gonna be going over some of the same stuff. But if you do watch through it, then I definitely appreciate you guys sticking around and I will talk to you guys later.